Hey everyone, I'm Rather Incoherent, and this is the Dark Matter Custom Campaign. It's a fantastic fan campaign that I actually like more than several of the official campaigns. I wanted to play it like a year ago, before I took a hiatus from Arkham Horror, and I'm actually playing with the exact characters considering then. I'm playing the blessed team of Fighter Sister Mary, Kluver Father Mateo, and before we get into the campaign, let's talk about the decks you'll be seeing today. First, we have a Sister Mary deck. These are both down the rabbit hole decks. You can see that when I click back and forth, not a lot changes coming over to Mateo, not a lot changes. These decks are going to be very boring in their upgrades. What you see at level 1 is largely what you'll see at level 60. Now, this deck is using 45 Thompsons and Runic Axis because these give plus 1 base, boostable to plus 3, and the 45 Thompson is plus 2. Brandon Cthug is a great backup weapon because it's slotless, you can run it at the same time, you can shoot over with no fear using it. It's just level 1 Brandon Cthug is legitimately, in my opinion, the most efficient card in all of Arkham Horror. It's absolutely disgusting how good it is, and even in Sister Mary with her terrible 3 base fist, I'm running it. I'm also running in the thick of it for the Ace of Swords tarot. I've recorded this twice now and had to restart the recording for different reasons. One time I just didn't remember to leave this screen size. You were just watching the game in teeny tiny squinto vision. And the other time I had forgotten to put deny existence and I drew my weakness with eight blesses in the bag. And like theoretically I could have just swapped out the cards then and there, those cards being Tempt Fate and a copy of Glorious Filler. And then I would have been able to deny it, but that felt so much like cheating I would rather restart. So far though, we're two for two on drawing Ace of Swords in our opening hand, so that's good at least, even if we have to keep recording the same video. And the deck is really just a fighter. All it does is run the best fight cards for a low level, or low fist rather, fighter. 45 Thompson's just a backup weapon for the backpack to hit if I miss the Runic Axe that could, you know, get the job done for a little while. Brandon Kathaga is great, obviously I won't level 4, but this deck is 60 experience. There's lots of stuff I don't need in the deck, like Guts. But things like Beat Cops level 2 and Guard Dogs are far more important to me than upgraded Branded Kathaga because these are also weapons. Like if you compare using a Beat Cop to using a Machete, you swing at plus 1, you exhaust the Beat Cop and you deal a damage to the guy in addition to the punch. That's just a Machete. It looks like a guy, but he's just a Machete. Guard Dog and Beat Cops are both effectively backup weapons, and I'm really happy to have both of them because they also stack with your normal weapons. And God knows Sister Mary needs the help because her 3 fist just doesn't cut. It just doesn't cut it. It's not even close. Then coming over to Father Mateo, let's talk about how greedy we're going to be for Blessed Energy. The answer is not that greedy. We have Favor this on Ancient Covenant, we have Voice of Rob, Ward of Radiance, and we're running Tempt Fate, and we have Jacob Morris as our main synergy card other than Ancient Covenant. You can run like Mikosi to turn all the symbols into Blesses, and then you run Blessing of Isis, so you Mikosi a skull into a Bless, then you Favor the Sun, then you Blessing of Isis, both of them back in the bag, and you get a star, and Father Mateo's star is awesome, and then you realize that combo cost you like I think 14 or 12 experience and seven resources to get into play and you did it at the use of your favor of the sun so now you can't use favor of the sun ancient covenant in the same turn and you presumably don't have jacob morris in that deck because there's only so much experience and resources to go around it's just a whole mess i think the cleaner simpler deck this one is the efficient better way to go on father mateo and we'll be seeing how it plays out coming down to level zero we just got in as many new cards as we can with our starting five experience ancient covenants in favor of the sun are core to our strategy and it avoids down the rabbit hole penalties on those cards. We still don't have either copy of Jacob Morrison, we still don't have our charisma, but everything else in the deck just stays the same and gets upgraded straightforward and simple. Now, coming over to the first scenario of Dark Matter, the Tattered Emollion. I guess first we need to get through the rest of this. We have opening blurb, we're going to be playing on standard difficulty, as we always do. There's a scan mechanic, it's a lot like exploring from Forgotten Age, it'll usually be on the agenda card or the act card, in this case it's on agenda too. If there's no clues on your location in this scenario, you can scan and you're searching for a location or searching for a scanning card rather that matches the top card of the deck or not the top card of the deck, a card in the deck. So in this case, you would just get the moon. If there was not a moon on top, then you would just do this until you found a moon. And then once you got around to that moon, this one, for instance, you would shuffle everything else back together. Now, like with Forgotten Age, there are failed scans. There was nothing that matches. You wasted your action. But coming over to the rules scanning, are you allowed to peek at the icons on the back of the scanning deck? And they're like, oh, we're not going to say you can't, but maybe you shouldn't. And I assume that's because they have playtesters like me where your enjoyment of the game increases dramatically if you're allowed to know what locations have anything worth scanning at them. Thematically, failing an explorer makes a lot of sense to me. You're in the jungle, it takes a while. But failing a scan feels like I clicked a button on a computer, it said nothing's there, and I spent a whole action somehow. I feel like failing a scan shouldn't spend an action, it should be getting the thing out of the scan, it should be like figuring out what type of ship this is, or finding an EVA suit, it's that stuff that makes the scan take a while, it's not like actually knowing it's there that takes forever, it's getting the stuff. So thematically it works better for me if scanning doesn't cost an action on a failed scan, 
So the way I'll be using meta knowledge, I'm not gonna look at the scan deck meticulously, right? I could like sort these out into piles at the top and make my decisions like that with huge amounts of meta knowledge. I don't like that as much. What I do is just if I scan and the scan fails, I refund the action because with meta knowledge, you would never have started the scan. It's a slight middle ground. It's mostly just meta knowledge benefits without having to waste your time doing it. And then we have memories. This is a number that's gonna go up for each investigator across the campaign. Generally, you want more of them. There's a couple points where having more memories is more dangerous, but you'll be rewarded eventually for having more memories. We go through the prologue, the scenario intro, we do all the setup stuff, and bam, ready to play the game. Getting around to the scenario, the encounter card is pretty soft, minus number of AI cards in your threat area for the skull, minus two for the cultists if you fail, drop a clue. We have seven doom threshold, you cannot resign. If the agenda advances, everyone dies and the ship explodes. And we need to spend four clues in the engine room to prevent that from happening. Coming down, we've got the two shroud cryo sleep quarters, two clues, we can resign, but not yet. And the engine room is three locations away. This is our objective for the time being. I believe I already have blessings in the bag. I have curses in the bag, like you do. I expect to make that mistake a lot. And we can get right in to this. Those do not say Ace of Swords. I took trauma for this, speaking of I should mark the trauma. Hey, look at him go, three for three. Good on you, little guy. I do not expect the hell of that over the campaign. This guy has his trauma marked already. Why do I only do it for one of you? That's so weird. I kind of had it on the brain. I hold scroll of secrets for sure. I think the rest of this is an easy toss. Scroll of secrets will just replace itself and then some over the scenario. Holy Rosary is great to see. Clairvoyance is great to see. This is a really solid opening hand. I'm happy with it. Those are blessed in the bag now. We're ready to start. We're ready to start. Good. We should probably consider shuffling these cards back into the decks though. That's always a good start. Over here for Sister Mary, this will start in play. I can't afford to play all of my cards and I definitely need to draw some. Oh, hey, I've got my backup weapon too, nice. Uh, don't really need that, yeah, I keep drawing cards. I think I draw again looking for a Guts to throw out Mateo or a stand together to play next turn. I'm just not immediately pressed to play this emergency cast. There are no enemies in the starting deck so I know I'm safe to be greedy. Now, coming over here on Mateo, we definitely first action scroll a secret, so we immediately tap that. For anyone wondering how to use scroll of secrets without actually showing anyone else, I got this from the comments, I forget who told me, but it's wonderful. Hold alt while holding your entire deck and then right click to drop at the bottom of the stack. I'll take that uncage the soul, thank you very much. And in fact, I'll go ahead and uncage my clairvoyance right now for a single resource. But I'm not gonna be using it just yet. I would like the consistency of having played a holy rosary. That'll be it for me, so we go into upkeep. Upkeep. Hey, stand together, right on to you. One of seven doom, and let's make sure this is shuffled evil cards. We have decompression. This is gonna do nothing just yet. It attaches to the nearest access location. At the end of the round, it'll deal three direct damage to anyone here without a spacesuit, and it discards itself, which means it discards itself before anyone goes there. So just so I don't forget, I'll discard it now. Over here, we have a hidden card. It's cabin pressure, speak of the devil. If I end my turn somewhere with multiple clues, I take two damage and discard cabin pressure. Hmm, seems likely, seems likely. I think I might just be using Clairvoyance and tossing Cabin Pressure this turn. I'm gonna use the first charge of Clairvoyance, I'm up three, no guts, do I have any like redundant, everything commits for fist. <laughs> we don't do brain here, the only brain is stand together. So we're up three, that'll do. I'll get both clues, and I will double action discard Cabin. Actually, I know the encounter deck's gonna shovel back in in like not too long from now. And there's no clues at my location anymore. I should see what's on the bottom of my deck. That's always a good start. Promise of power, thanks. Scroll of Secret's just a pretty good card. I'm looking at like just playing emergency cash and then drawing a card. It seems so greedy not to get rid of this now, but I don't want to have to do it again later is the thing. Now I know I'm gonna need to draw more cards than this. And I know when I draw more cards than this, I forgot to put in a bless over the end, uh, the end of the round. I should be doing that during upkeep. I'm just gonna put it next to the upkeep button to remind me because I'm not noticing it on top of Sister Mary. I'm gonna go ahead and be greedy. I don't wanna shuffle that back in. I'm gonna play this emergency cash. I'm going to upkeep. Or sorry, I'm gonna draw a card and then we go into upkeep. We should probably take Sister Mary's turn. I stand together. Right, we have more money than we know what to do with now. Unfortunate, but fine. I'm gonna play a runic axe as my main weapon. I'm gonna do something with this runic axe that's different than the last time I played. So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna have one token that I flip when I have used the charge and then I'll get rid of resources after that. That way it will always be refilling the one per round that I'm guaranteed. Once I get Saga, I'll have two of these and two resources instead. I just think it'll be easier for me to remember to do it correctly like that. 
That was staying together and that. And we're gonna play Beat Cop as our last action with all of our remaining money. Are we swinging at six right now, Sister Mary? Look at you go. A regular Mark Harrigan, fully set up. Good job. We're gonna go ahead and add a blessed token, by the way. Oh, hey, uh, there's our weaknesses. I forgot to mention this uh, in the first two videos I did, but I mean, re-record the same video too many times. You'll eventually fuck it up, right? In this run, we're using the Scarlet Keys weaknesses for these characters. I just haven't gotten to see all of them played yet. Ectoplasmic Horror is the weakness for Mystics. It's a 2-2-2 Hunter deals one horror. And the first time you attack it in a round... Actually, it doesn't say in a round, just the first time ever. But the first time you ever attack this thing or try to evade it, for every empty arcane slot you have, you're going to have to reveal an extra token, so it very likely will cost the fighter a second action. Not the biggest deal for us. And then over here on Sister Mary, we'll go ahead and open up the list to show you. It's the Lurker in the Dark for Guardians. 3 2 1 Monster Shoggoth, Guardians only, Hunters spawn at a connecting location. They can only be damaged by attacks using weapons or tactic events and takes one fewer damage from each source. So it's basically a three health enemy. It's definitely a bit of a hassle because things like guard dogs don't work on it, Brand of Cathuga doesn't work on it. It's actually a pretty nasty enemy for this deck specifically to solve, at least until I have a much more aggressively upgraded Runic Axe. Anyway, coming to the top of the round, two of seven Doom. We're making great tempo, don't worry about it, as always. Anachronism, three ahead for each point you fail by, discard a non-story asset you control, or take one horror. Well, we have guts for a reason, let's not do that. Cool, we pass, and it's because of guts. Ran that card for a reason. Spectral Razor is always great to see. It's a very strong card. Unfortunately, not a tactic. Doesn't work against our weakness, but they're not here. Haunting Pass is currently a brain zero test because we don't have memories yet, so that'll be a pass. Um, I'm going to go first on Sister Mary, but I'm also going to immediately have Scroll of Secrets and use its last charge to see what's on the bottom here. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll take an Olive McBride. Why not? The taboo to make this from an action into a lightning bolt transformed it from unusable trash to actually just great card. Love this thing now. Now, Ectoplasmic Horror, we can just swing at six twice against it, probably. I don't see a need to burn Spectral Razor, so I'm going to do just that. Engage, then swing with my Recurring Charge. We're swinging with uh, just... Whenever I'm not specifying, I'm just getting plus one for the one charge I use for damage. So I'm swinging at six for two, and we're going to reveal three tokens because of my empty arcane assets. Oh, you know what? Oh, I don't have the money for Randy Kavaga. If I had Brandy Kavaga in play, I could do it a little bit more efficiently, but alas. I mean, I'm the fighter, right? Like, I don't have to... I can just take a horror from this. Put it on Beat Cop, put it on myself, who cares? I have tons of horror, so... I can play, like, Emergency Cash Brand. That's so pointless. Just swing at him. Why am I concerned about this? And we have two empty, so we get a third one. <laughs> yeah, sure, why not? And then we use our next charge to go ahead and get um, two damage up four again. And this time he dies. I feel like this is possibly gonna result in me forgetting to put down resources. We'll see. In my head, it made sense I would be better using it this way, but I might not be. Now, seeing as there's like next to no chance of us going to the next room and getting all the clues, I think it is time to stop being a greedy idiot and just discard this cabin pressure. I'm gonna play, I don't need all of McBride. I don't need voice of Rod. I just need to go. I'm gonna walk to the next location. We've got the mess hall, one trout, four clues, reaction. When anyone gets resources here, gain one more limit once per round, but not group limit so we can all do it. Would have been nice to play stand together there, but alas, Tempt Fate is great. Add the bless for that thing that I didn't actually use earlier. Tempt Fate, once again, great. Only have one in this deck, sadly. Three of seven doom and evil cards, coolant leak. Test four foot for every point you fail by, either discard a card or take a damage, huh? But we're at a different location, so I can't get that promise of power. I can get a backpack. But there's not a point, because I can just discard the backpack if I fail by that amount. If I had to deny, I could just deny the damage, but I wouldn't want to hold it unless I had a second deny. I think I'm just taking this straight and being very sad about it. This is just rough. <laughs> like, there's not... Thankfully, it's only down two. It could have been a lot worse. I'm going to put one damage on my beat cop for sure. I'm going to discard this backpack that has no value to me. Cool, that's it for her card, but over here on Mateo... Test three head, we're presently up two. And we can take horror for failure. I mean, I don't think we need to tempt fate for that. I'm gonna tempt fate during this turn to get favor of the sun in play anyway. So I will tempt fate just to give myself the chance. One, two, three, one, two, three. If we get a blessed token, we just stop it immediately. That's minus two, that is exact pass, thanks to the rosary, that's very helpful. All right, cool. I'm going to play favor of the sun and all of McBride were four resources. 
steal some blasts over here. And then I'm going to... Oh, you know what? There's a better way to do that. Um, we're going to play the Favor of the Sun after uh, we investigate. We're going to use Clairvoyance first. And we're not going to use all because I don't want to resolve multiple blesses, right? Yeah. That's fine. That's still just an easy pass. We get two clues. And I was doing that to leave more of a chance of um, hitting a blessed token to guarantee a success. And then we seal the blessed tokens as our last action instead. Now, over here on Mary, we obviously need to come up. We need to pretend we're helping. I'm going to play Brand of Cthulhu, I guess. Like, why not? And I'm going to play Emergency Cash, because I'm broke. And I, I feel like I should probably have a use for money at some point. That brings the upkeep. We add a Bless. And we move on to the next round. Four of seven Doom and Evil Cards. We're fine. We're making great pace. We are up two on the Fist Test presently. This will kill my Beat Cop. Oh, I appear to have drawn Crisis of Faith. I mean, sometimes you just draw Crisis of Faith before either copy of Deny, and there's nothing you can do about it. We have six Blesses in the bag. My ability goes off at the end of the round, technically speaking, so it's really only five when this goes off. I'm going to remove four, one, two, three, four, and put in one, two, three, four Curses, and put the Horror on Beat Cop. Very fun. Anyway, we're testing up two. I no longer care if Beat Cop lives, because I'm just expecting him to die. We're at the same location. This is currently a pass, and I get Ancient Covenant to stop it here. With the current balance of tokens, I'm more likely going to draw Blesses, or Curses rather, and eventually fail. I'm also just up two. There's a very good chance I pass. It's only if I draw a Bless that I regret this. Yeah, see? Easy. One of each gone, and I pass. Then over here, hidden card. Stop that! <laughs> this is the guy that needs his actions to progress the game. I really, really am getting frustrated with Cabot Pressure on Mateo twice. Oh, man. Because I know they're getting shuffled back in immediately anyway. Okay, I know what to do. Meta Knowledge, ahoy. I move twice. I enter Cargo Hold. I take a two-head test. I'm up three. If I fail, I take a Horror. I don't. Second move. I enter the Engine Room. It's a four shroud room. At the end of your turn, if you're here and you do not control Radiation Tablets, I won't take one damage. That's fine. Last action. I investigate with my last charge of clairvoyance, and I'm going to release a blessed token from here, which is actually outright removed. It says um, release, right? As it were just revealed, so it would go away. Uh, so I use Ancient Covenant, and that passes the check quite easily. I get two clues. There are no clues in this room, and I spend my previous four clues to regress the act as well. And ending my turn here, I will take one damage immediately, but I don't explode for two damage. And now I don't have to shuffle it back in. So we regress the act, we shuffle in the discard pile and the AI set, 12 new cards, and our deck of 28. In addition, we progress right to act two, or agenda here rather, doom stays, but we don't all explode on the back of the slime, so that's nice. Our new goal is to figure out how to repair the insane cybernetic AI, and our scan rules are now here. If you have no clues, scan, search the topmost card in the deck with an icon matching your current location, and draw it, shuffle the scanning deck. I feel very confident that a turn ago I played Emergency Cash and didn't gain a resource from my location. I was thinking about gaining a resource now and also realizing I have no reason to. I'm going to draw a card right on time to deny literally the card under my weakness. I don't want to take a damage. But I don't want Father Mateo wasting his turns in that room. So I'm going to move over. And I can move down Scan Scan next turn. I don't have to do it this turn. I'm going to draw again. Oh, I take um a whore. That's a bad draw. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, we're taking a head two test to see if we take damage here. This should have came back. I messed it up immediately. All right, I figured it out. I figured it out. This is going to be super helpful, and it's never going to be confusing or bad at all. I'm going to put a tiny little runic axe locked on my board next to the upkeep button, and it's, there's going to be no confusion whatsoever about what that means. This is a completely normal, super reasonable upkeep button. No confusion will come as a result of this. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't take horror, but I do immediately get slapped for a damage by this uh, lurking fear, lurker in the dark. Upkeep phase, add a bless at the end of the round. It drew the tiny runic axe! <laughs> no, incorrect. Upkeep. Okay, I have to put it up here, I guess. I don't know why I drew the tiny runic axe. Oh, that was very funny. <laughs> Upkeep phase, Codex of Aegis, five of seven, doom. I've taken my damage, evil cards. 
artificial gravity malfunction. That's also very unfortunate because now using my axe costs an extra action, meaning I literally can't even kill the guy I just drew from my own deck. Over here, we have coolant leak, test for foot. If you fail, discard cards from hand or take one damage for each point you fail by. Is that bad enough to promise a power or ancient covenants? I'm gonna promise a power this. I think it's the cleanest solution to the problem posed. Cool, there's a lot of curses in that. Kind of would appreciate you guys leaving, but okay, you can just hang out. And now it's our turn. Previously, I wanted Father Mateo to leave and let um, Mary come deal with this. But seeing that I can't do anything in the next location anyway, it's to enter, not to... Yes, artificial gravity affects you while you're here. Moving in has no additional cost. I am going to scan twice and move in. I've played this enough already and failed filming that I know that there are two things with Hourglass that I've been doing meta knowledge rules. So I'm just gonna get both of them. Neither of them have any effect on what I do next. That's one of them. This is the other, and there should be no more, correct? We have the Mind Machine interface. We're gonna give this to Sister Marie, or Sister Mary rather. This is the thing where you spend clues as a group to scan. Any action tax can just be given to your fighter immediately. And what type of ship is this? I get a memory. In fact, uh, nope, just me. Sister Mary wasn't down here when I was doing this. And then we can either get a doom and two victory or remove the card from the game and not. Anyway, I'm gonna take that victory. Very, very easy choice for me. And that'll be the end of Fata Mateo's turn. Uh, this guy's kind of a problem. <laughs> I can't even kill him because I only get one action this turn because of this shit. I can walk and take a slap for one, and that lets me kill him. I mean, I'm taking a slap for one regardless. Oh no, because walking is two actions now. <laughs> I just can't deal with this guy because of that card. <laughs> you ever just get crushed by your basic weakness, man? The funny thing is, this isn't even a Sister Mary problem, right? She has six fists right now, and she's swinging at two in scenario one, but she's only allowed to attack once, and the guy has three health effectively. Like, there's nothing to think about. I swing once and pass my last action, right? Because I can't beat cop him. So, yeah, I double action to swing once. Um, stop that. We're done. And that'll be one whole damage, because I can't inscribe the same effect multiple times until you get Script Weaver. Um, I can try to trip him. I'm up two. I may as well. Cool, he's tripped. I don't have to take the damage, at least. Yeah, attack your damage. I can still trip him normally. Upkeep, add a bless. Can't forget that. Upkeep over here as well. Would really like some more clue finding assets, buddy. You're gonna need to find those if we're gonna win. And we get this guy in the loading bay, I believe. UPL, A21, also known as Demi. Five attack, six health, two foot. Spawns in the cargo hold and a hunter, but while moving or engaged, she ignores everyone who doesn't have an AI encounter card in their threat area. For instance, right now, our whole team. Unfortunately, if anyone were to draw an AI encounter card right now, he would immediately engage them. We both have our own words of protection for that, though, so it's not the worst in the world. Test two foot, plus one difficulty for those. I don't have any. And if you fail, everyone at your investigation takes one damage and it gains search. We have like eight curses, right? Oh, we have seven. I was wondering if Tempt Fate even had a downside at this point. I'm going to play the Tempt Fate. I just don't see a reason not to. Let's see if we can't draw something that helps. Of course we didn't. This is one damage to both of us and Surge if I fail. But I mean, like, yeah, that's just what the card says. I'm not warding that. Perfect, that's why we did it. Stop, cease and desist immediately. Now over here, coolant leak again. Do I have a promise of power? No. If I had, it would have considered it on the previous one. It's foot four. We can't do shit for foot test. We've been over this. Discard cards. I don't really need this Codex of Aegis. Definitely don't need this Voice of Ra. Oh, Cabin Pressure goes off and I take two damage. Honestly, that's fine. Honestly, that's not the biggest deal. Discarding cards with this completely empty hand doesn't feel the best. And I just used Ancient Covenant so I can't protect myself with it. So here's where I'm at. There are 10 curses in the bag. We're failing by four. And there is nothing I can do about it. I'm taking the test. Yeah, exactly. Minus five. Glad I didn't commit cards. Uh, so I fail by four. We take four damage or discard four cards or some combination thereof. You can go away. I don't really want to take four damage and die, so I need to discard more cards. I'm going to toss Codex of Aegis. As long as I hold Word of Protection, Word of Radiance, I shouldn't really be very capable of dying. 
My numbers aren't the best. I feel like I still need the guts. I'm gonna take two horror or two physical damage. I know I'm like almost dead, but I promise you it's fine. It's not a big deal. Thankfully, this, this card's at the end of the round and now we're allowed to play the game again. Last turn could have went better. Didn't really want to take up to six damage on Father Mateo this round, but hey, here we are. Getting this guy into the Gargo Hold is a bit of a hassle. Because, like, he has to hunt in there or be dragged in there, so he will hit you for three, guaranteed. Oh, wait, does he spawn Cargo Hold? He spawns Cargo Hold. Yeah, there we go. I was like, that's not right. That shouldn't happen. So now we can go trip him if we have a Promise of Power, which we don't, of course. But we do have an Agent Covenant on Mateo, and he'll be heading that way shortly. I'm up three to two here. There's a million curses in the bag. Oh, wait. Every time you enter here, you take the two head dust. I was up three, and I passed. Cool. Didn't take the horror. Just forgot about that. I'm going to take this basic investigate three times. I know it sounds terrible, but there are so many curses in the bag. I need to get this clue eventually. I think this is actually the most efficient way to do it. All right, cool. I take it once and get the clue. Never mind. Scratch all of that. Now I'm going to be using this ancient covenant to trip this guy out of the airlock. So we go up here, escape pod bay, three shroud, two clues. After you successfully evade an enemy at this location, defeat them, just shoot them straight out of the airlock, limit three times per game. And that's exactly what we'll be doing with this guy. Very clean solution. Uh, we do still need to get these clues, though, unfortunately. So I'm going to draw a card because I literally can't do it right now. I just, I'm 13 cards deep in my deck. I've seen one clairvoyance and one read the signs. Is that right? Have I seen a read the signs this version? No, I haven't seen a read the signs. I've seen one clairvoyance. No read the signs, no other clue finding assets. Coming over to my final deck, my plan is I'll just play Uncage the Soul and the economy will work, I promise. Uh, that doesn't sound good. That sounds wrong. I think we might have to buy some divinations over some other stuff in here. And if I had to point to a card that's likely getting cut, it's probably these temp fates. Uh, they're theoretically very, very good, but they're also entirely optional. We get enough blesses from Sister Mary. I think it's just gotta be the temp fate that goes. These probably turn into divinations. I hate to say it. I just don't have enough clue finding cards. I knew this would happen, but I just wanted to believe it wouldn't. Because until Edge of the Earth, Uncaged 3 and Divination didn't exist. I was like, surely this just used to work. And the answer is no, you used to run six sets. Or you used to draw better than this, I'm not sure. Anyway, that's his turn. Over here, for the love of God, please die. I swing, I'm using accuracy. Wait, I have to use damage. That's still up three. I'm not comfortable with that. I wanna be up more than that. I'm gonna use a charge as well. Cool, he's dead. Nightmare that he is. Next, I'm going to scan my location. We're looking for red square. I know there's at least one thing here. Let's see if there's anything else while we're here. Nope, just the one red square. We get the EVA suit. Because this has a double action, we're going to be giving it... Mm, normally we would. This goes over to you, because it can protect you from damage. And you seem to need that. Even though I'd rather give the action tax to the fighter, you seem like you might just need this card. Now, we have another action left here. It's not going to be scanning. This guy's going to get tripped by Mateo. This guy is going to... Uh, that's kind of it, right? Mateo trips him, gets the clues, leaves. And we would rather Sister Mary do the scanning, so she's going to follow up in case she needs to play Bodyguard as well. That'll be it for us. Upkeep, add a Bless token, and Upkeep. We have Read the Signs. At least it gets clues and a Promise of Power. That's actually very nice. One of Nine Doom, this is the last agenda, so we're going to have to make a good pace from here. But we've cleared out, you know, a portion of the map. And we haven't left the rest undone, right? Like, there's still clues we've got in them there. Electric Surge while on top of the other guy, yet again. I'm going to Word of Protection this. We're at a point where not playing Word of Protection just threatens to kill Mateo. Like, we're an Evelyn away from death over here. Uh, we're testing Brain X. I'm not committing to that. We pass. Because Brain X is currently one. Okay, um, I'm going to... Does this still damage to you? It's horror, thank God. Uh, I'm going to engage this guy. I'm going to evade him at 3 to 2. I release a token from Favor of the Sun and remove it and stop with Ancient Covenant to succeed. And then I use this reaction to blast him out of the airlock, killing him instantly. Um, and then I guess I read the signs because that's like what I've got. That's what I'm working with. We're looking at five, six, seven, eight to three. Oh, right. It was eight to three, right? Hey, we pass. I forgot there were a million curses in the bag, but no punish. Cool. No justice ever over here on Sister Mary. We can now scan the location. We're looking for moons. Jokes on me, there are no moons, but I still need to be over here to bodyguard Mateo just in case. I'm sure there are some enemies in the deck. So we won't be scanning for moons. I'm gonna be honest. If Mateo gets another enemy, I can make the trip happen and run away. It's just way more efficient for me to run down here. And I 
think I just go on to the infirmary because you can search the, the infirmary has its own scan action. The hearts you've been seeing are not a location on the map. It's a scan from the infirmary. And that's just something Sister Marie can do. I can guarantee an evade with favor of the sun and run away if Mateo does draw something. Investigating here up one sounds like a complete waste of time. Yeah, I'm just gonna get started on scanning. Oh, wait, I can go down here. I don't recall what scanning down here does, but I'm gonna go up here. This is more important because I need to keep Father Mateo alive. Scan, look at the medical supplies, search for the topmost card in the scanning deck with the icon below and shuffle it. Three trial, two clues. That'll be it for us. Upkeep, don't forget the blessed token once the lag finishes at least. Upkeep, promise of power is great. Two of nine, doom, evil cards. You didn't draw an enemy, did you? Thank God. We got an old sister Mary, which is great RNG. Spawn nearest location with no clues. Well, I can put it in a lot of places. Do you do stuff? You place a clue on its location from the token bank. Well, I'm not a fan of that. Is there a way I can make you not matter? It's either gonna force a trip from Father Mateo to get past it, or an investigate to get this clue, which is just like not pleasant no matter what. I hate that I drew this ahead of time. I shouldn't have. Um, I didn't realize this would affect the decision making because now that I know this isn't an enemy, it makes it so that it's all clear to go ahead and put this here. I think I know now that there are no enemies in the deck that spawn with you though. If I'm right, they're all either aloof enemies in the deck or things you find by scanning or guys like this, which means that the only enemy Mateo could have drawn would have had this choice anyway. I'm going to put him here so that we don't have to investigate his location. Instead, we can just trip him and run by. Speaking of, Father Mateo is going to walk down. He probably should look at what his card is. It's a hallucinatory hologram, hidden peril. Add this to your hand. At the end of your turn, there's at least one AI card in your threat area. Take through horror. I'm fine with horror. That's not a problem. Uh, we're going to get engaged by this guy. We're going to trip. We're going to do the old ancient covenant strat. Get rid of that bless and get rid of him. We're gonna move on with our lives. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. I've just completely forgotten something very important. Uh, let's um, uh, let's not go evade this guy. Let's not go evade this guy. Uh, the EVA suit has an ability to move from one access location to another, then scan. Uh, we're in the access location. It's this location. That's the only one that we can get to. We can't actually get to the ship's bridge. So rather than running past this guy, like screw that, let's use the EVA suit. That's way better. If you're on an access location, double action, move to another access location. So I pop over here. Yeah, you can't enter it from the mess hall, but we can't enter it from other locations, so we're safe. Search for the topmost card of the scanning deck with a star. I believe it's already on top of the scanning deck. It is. And our star card is as strange as the night. I get two tally marks and a victory. Memories taken on up. That card's gonna start doing stuff real soon. And now that I'm in the ship's bridge, after you perform a scan at this location, if there are no clues on it, add one player's clues on it from the token bank. Starts with two, three shroud. Last action, I'm just going to play another scroll of secrets, and I'm going to drop a card and take pretty much anything that it offers me. I don't really need a holy rosary, unfortunately. I'm still going to take it. It gives me horror soak, I guess. Uh, it's not like I can investigate. I just, those are on the bottom half of my deck, man. Over here, we're going to do this heart action a couple of times, get all the medical supplies. We've got however many scans it takes, that's what we're doing. I think there's only two of them. There are just the two, so we're going to scan twice. We get the medical foam and the radiation tablets. They both go under the control of any investigator. This is a hand slot, which means it's going automatically to Father Mateo. Scroll of Secrets gets discarded. After an investigator at your location takes any amount of damage, exhaust this, spend one supply, and heal that damage from them. Unfortunately, if I were to take one damage, I would die, so it doesn't do anything right now. This other one, the Radiation Tablets, will also be going to Father Mateo so that he doesn't ever need to worry about that card again, because he's at no health. I know plus one foot and fist is definitely more relevant for Marie, but or for Mary. The existence of Marie Lambeau makes me mispronounce this as Sister Marie every time. But still, this is going to help out a little bit on Mateo, at least. And I think I'm just going to walk down to this location with the intention being that Mateo's going to come this way to get clues and open up this stuff for us. It's going to happen, I promise. And that'll be it for us. Upkeep phase, we get a blessed token, we get our last charge back. And we're going to have to discard some cards over here. It's easily prepared for the worst, it's not even a brief decision. Top of the round, three of nine doom. Getting a little bit worried about time here. The all-seeing eye, we finally have one of these. As an additional cost of scan, discard cards on top of the encounter deck until an AI encounter card is drawn and then, or sorry, discarded it and then troll it. At the end of your turn, you can test foot three to throw this away. Neat. Over here, another hidden card. It's reminisce. 
We're gonna need to successfully evade an enemy because having these really, really sucks. I don't remember what they do, but it's very, very bad. And I'm all out of recording time for the day because I've messed up recording this too many times. So I'll be stopping for now. I'll come back, figure out what's going on and try to make the best of it. With six turns remaining, I think we can full complete this, but it's really close to not happening. We have nine scans we need to do. We have four locations that we need to clear. It's gonna be a little bit rough. Five, one of these is a location itself, but I think we can probably do it. All right, when you load a save with blessed tokens, they sort of stop working. So I've had to remake the bag back from where it started off up here. Ignore all those errors, they're probably fine. There's a new version of Tabletop Sim. I'll be switching over to it after this scenario, but as we're in the middle of a scenario, I can't really switch right now. And it'll help with this problem a lot because this updates and it's much nicer. These will probably start tracking correctly again. We'll see how it goes once we switch, but for now, we got to finish out this scenario. Coming in, we seem to have taken all of the damage over here. It's why we have the EVA suit. It's not our turns yet. I'm going to just immediately drop something over here on Mateo before anyone picks their turn. Sure, uncage the soul. We don't have any clue finding spells. They're all in the bottom half of our deck, bottom third at this point. Meanwhile, on fighting, Sister Mary actually says I have it handled. She's been doing better than Mateo. I kind of want to get rid of this before I do any scans, because if I don't, what happens is you draw all the all-seeing eyes, and then you can't scan, because you have to get like three AI cards as an additional cost to scan. And uh, you can't, because they're all in play. You have them all already. So it will stop Sister Mirror from scanning pretty quickly if I scan with this in play. I should have warded that when I got it. I don't know if that was an option. I think I just got it, and I should have been able to do it. And I was concerned about running out of time. So honestly, with as much horror as I have and knowing the encounter set, I think I'm going to do that. Let me check if it actually was in my hand in the previous episode, though. Yeah, it's looking like I had Ward of Protection and drew All-Seeing Eye right after in the upkeep phase, so we're good. This is a misplay that I made as I was wrapping up because I had to go do other stuff in real life. And I'm fine with just playing that retroactively and getting this out of here. I wasn't even really thinking about what this actually represented in terms of overall game patterns. And now we can get back into the scenario. Our plan is to desperately draw of our cards over here, but um, he doesn't have card draw and Sister Mary can't give him any. We also need to trip somebody or get a tablet. I'm gonna be honest, that probably just means we get tablets. If you end with any of these in your hands, you get a tablet. I don't see us doing this. We have six turns to get nine successful scans and clear four locations. We need to move around a lot between these locations. Mateo's gonna have to move at least once, twice, three, four times. Like I math out how much time Mateo has left and it's just not looking good for him. I'm gonna go first on Mateo. And I'm just going to draw cards. I'm just gonna draw cards and try to find a solution to where we currently find ourselves. I added the draw one button because I knew that didn't work and then I didn't use it immediately. Cool, we found Ride of Seeking. That's just mandatory to do our job. What cards are we keeping? Wards of Radiance, Wards of Protections, buffs. Probably should have played Favor Sun instead of drawing that last card, huh? So I think these are my discards, which feels terrible, but it's where I'm at. And then over here on Sister Mary, I can spend our clues as a group. So I'm gonna spend four clues on Father Mateo to do a scan for that icon. And let's see what we get. Cool, we have this thing. Our card is a Sire Virus. Congratulations, Mary. If I can get the clues here, it'll actually trigger him. I'm up plus two. How many curses are in the bag? I, I don't even know. I'm just gonna add and remove. Seven. I'm gonna investigate this location a couple of times straight to dig curses out. Yeah, like that. Well, I only got one curse out and I didn't do anything, so that's unfortunate. Uh, there's a very good chance of me getting a clue and making progress or of digging out a lot of curses, but we can just do nothing instead. That's fine. That's fine. Upkeep, add a bless. Upkeep. Oh, great. Uh, I guess I'm discarding Guts then. <laughs> I seem to have drawn all of the cards I needed right back to back. That's fine though. Over here, we're a little bit over. This 45 Thompson's never going into play. Let's not pretend. Four Doom out of nine and evil cards. Haunting Pass, not a big deal. Testing is zero, actually. Just get out of here. This attaches to the nearest access location, like the one I'm in, but also I have an EVA suit, so nothing happens. But Sister Mary can't come in here now, which is on the whole fine. I'm just gonna spend my whole turn playing Clairvoyance and Rite of Seeking, and that's all of my money. And then I investigate with Rite of Seeking. It's only five to two, or sorry, five to three. Not willing to take that chance. I'm gonna release my last token here and Ancient Covenant that to make absolutely sure, like we don't even pull from the bag, that's what happens. And that means, what does it mean? We get all the clues here, that's what it means. And we've done our setup. Now, Sister Mary can't come in here, unfortunately, but you know what she can do? She can dig curses out of the bag and try to make progress. You can't do anything about that. Okay, so now the issue is we have one clue. 
We want to be at up two on the next investigate because the cultist would drop the clue. I honestly think I might promise a power of this test. I'm looking at committing denies to be up two to beat the cultist. I'm looking at promise to be up three, which isn't much better. I can do deny and promise to be up four due to the possibility of double curse being very likely. And I hate it, but I'm doing it. Can I scan again? Uh, we have just enough clues that I could scan again, actually. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scan again using all of our clues. It's not at your location, right? Yeah, four clues as a group. So that gets rid of my clue, preventing me from dropping it again. It's already on the top. I get one tally. I heal up to two horror. And this goes to the victory display. And that solves our problem nicely. And now I can just investigate, not caring if I fail. I mean, I can just waste a bunch of tokens. It's fine. Yeah, can't drop that, buddy. It's gone. I spent it. All right, so that solves that problem. Really weird thing happening here, Sister Mary. It's fine. Uh, the serpents are here. That's no good. Steal the Elder Sign. Thankfully, this goes off, and I'm safe because of my spacesuit. We get another Blessed Token. A part of me really thinks I should hold this mirror, but that part of me is a coward. Five of nine Doom. Feeling a little bit pressured. Four turns left. I can just deny existence the damage. I can't, actually. I'm not the same location, so you can't help for low level decks. I mean, we're testing up to, and if I fail, I just play a guard dog instead. Not that I'm going to fail. And over here, we have more hidden cards. Um, what's this again? AI cards in your threat area. Well, thankfully that hasn't happened yet, but it's getting progressively more terrifying. If I get any AI cards in my threat area, I'm just worried of radiancing them immediately. So over here for Mary, like we just sort of have to walk in Spectral Razor. It's not even a choice anymore. That's fine. I walk in and I Spectral Razor. And we do not pull the auto fail, right? I engage as part of the action. That's not what I meant to do. Look, I, you know it's in front of me. He's dead. We can release the Elder Sign. We can put him down. And then we can scan instead of Mateo here. We're looking for the T, which we have. Everyone here gets one memory. I get three resources. So one memory here, three resources, one memory here. And this goes up here. And that's Mary's last action. Now, ideally, Mary will always be the one investigating or scanning, but at this point, I think there's no way to avoid scanning here on Mateo. Because if I don't, I have to like walk through here. I want to get this last clue on Mary. So we scan here. I keep trying to pull tokens when I say scan, we need stick. Or T-Junction, rather, we got T-Junction. What are you? We have Hayates, 232, two, aloof, alert, parlay, test three head. I can do that without engaging him. That's very important. I don't think I knew this the first time I played it, so I did like engage him and then parlay him and then he'd beat me up. <laughs> Anyway, if you fail, he attacks you. If you succeed, scan one of the below icons, search for the topmost card in the scanning deck with that icon, shuffle it. Like that's basically just what I'm doing anyway. So I'm just gonna scan for the T instead of asking you to do it for me. Is there any T's left? I think that was the last one, yeah. And this is, everyone gets one tally, advanced act 2B, add it to the victory display. So we're going up to three and five. And in the victory display, we're seeing, or rather in Act 2B, someone gets the virtual access key. It's Mary. This takes up a next slot. The next slot's busy over here. Our goal is to scan that symbol from Cryo Sleep Quarters. We still want to clear out here, here, and here. We might not be able to do that, honestly, because we have to go around the long way. I was thinking you could find the access tunnel from here, but since I've scanned everything that's here, I can't. I've also done everything. I've done both of these symbols in high 80, so I have to go back out. As my last action on Mateo, then I'm just going to leave because there's nothing left to do in there. That brings us to upkeep. We're fine on everything over there. Six of nine doom. Three turns remain. Hidden cards. Uh, we're just not going to end our turn at location. There's clues. It's easy. Anachronism for each point you fail by. Discard non-story asset you control. Take one horror. I can just take the horror. Not a big deal. Don't really need to ward this. Probably not even failing up to. Yeah, it happens. It's fine. I'll take the horror. I may as well just like put all of that on... Olive, right? There's no reason not to. All right, Sister Mary, you're going to walk to the next location. You're going to investigate, and we're going to give you a promise of power. Honestly, there's so many curses, maybe we should give her two. I'm going to. Curse Cascade is very likely. Auto fail far less likely. So we're investigating at nine to one. Yeah, this is what we saw coming. That's fine. Uh, we pass quite easily. I get this clue, and a man spawns. Because he's 244, four, peril hidden, add him to your hand. After you discover the last clue from a location, he spawns, engaged with you. He's only got four health, he's only hitting me for two horror. Like, he's a bit spooky, but he's not the biggest deal. 
We're swinging at three, four, five, six to two. That's just plenty, don't need accuracy. Probably should have used accuracy anyway, but that's two damage. And that'll be our last action for the turn. On Mateo, do I need to play Favor of the Sun? It makes me safer for the rest of the campaign. Sure, I play Favor of the Sun. I seal my three blessed tokens. I move up and I investigate with Rite of Seeking and I immediately release a blessed tap this just to guarantee the success, I can't afford to waste time. And I get both of these clues, allowing me to scan at the infirmary. Now, once we do this, we're going to advance so Sister Mary can go down and do it alone, ideally. That's it for us. Enemy phase, we're gonna get hit for two horror over here, which is scary, but ultimately not a big deal. I may as well just deny that. What's gonna be bigger than two horror? Seven of nine doom, two turns remain, evil cards. I have minus one to all my skills while fighting AI enemies, so um, still not a problem, you only has two. All seeing eye, it's harder for you to scan now. And you explode. Ward of Radiance. <laughs> Let's see if we, yeah, that, that immediately finishes, we're good. Uh, get out of here, we're not doing that. <laughs> we're not going to, just no, absolutely not. Okay, so over here on Mary, I'm gonna learn from my mistake from last turn and play around Curse Cascade. He's dead, thanks Axe. Then I'm going to scan my current location. I believe there are two things available for Messel, one's on top of the deck. Ventilation shafts. Oh, does this connect to Messel? It does. I completely forgot that there's a diagonal connection in the middle here. Cool. Makes a lot of sense that there would be. Anyway, I have another action left. I'm going to use it to scan Messel again because there's one circle left. We have a stick and a triangle. It's this guy. Uh, he's victory one, so I do need to kill him, I guess. But we're kind of out of time on that front. Don't think he's dying. Because Mateo's the guy who's supposed to be going down. I really want to know what's in the ventilation shaft. Like, it's probably victory, right? <laughs> On Mateo, I walk over, I investigate, clairvoyance, it doesn't really matter which one I use, release the token, remove it, ancient covenant, get the clues guaranteed. Like being a forehead mystic does suck, but being able to just like tell the game I take all the clues is pretty nice. I scan for the sticks. Oh yeah, this is the one that gives me experience for every single scenario of the campaign from here on out, nice. Uh, yeah, this is just giving me an extra experience every single scenario because it's a permanent card added to my deck. And yeah, uh, since we both have Mental Trial, I can just give out a free experience every single scenario. I'm going to put this over here so I can't lose it. Cool. That was just end the ventilation shots. We have this still. Where the hell is Blue Triangle? Oh, it's the starting location. Yeah, we never did that one. Fair enough, but that's not what we need to scan to finish the scenario. Anyway, we're done for the round. Upkeep. Upkeep. Add a bless. Eight of nine doom. The clock has run out. Yeah, we were never, we were never stopping these. They're, like, we can't even evade enemies. These are just tablets every time we get on. It, we have to be so far ahead of tempo to like start spending promise of power to evade people, to unevade them, to get rid of this. And this team is kind of on the struggle bus. So yeah. Anyway, over here we get anachronism. Um, I play Word of Protection because it just feels like objectively wrong not to. It's the last turn of the game, just make it go away. Now we need to get down here and scan for this. We need to get down here and scan for the objective. We have the clues to scan for the objective, no problem. Mateo can only do one. Sister Mary can do one. All right, I have a really sick play that solves all of this, but I just realized something very important as I was starting to do it. Um, to scan for this symbol finishes the scenario immediately. We need to scan for this one first, which means Mateo needs to go down and scan for that. Uh, I do have a play that kills this guy, but I just have to do it second. I was doing my turns and I order. It's very important I get this right. So we're going to just Scan. I don't need to pull tokens. Um, I scan and get this. It's Cryo Sleep Chambers. We get one tally for Mateo. Uh, I'm not going to draw his cards because they obviously don't matter, but I will mark the tally. This goes in the victory. Now, over here in Mary, I just realized uh, I already did the play this time. My beat cop was in my graveyard. Um, it's Spectral Razor. Commit all of this. Commit every fist icon I have in my entire hand. Apparently, I forgot to deny. And then you beat cop him afterwards to deal four, which is uh, exactly what we do. Spectral Razor kills him, pretty much guaranteed. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in the bag, and that is a very big number. That is minus five. But also, we committed four icons, and we were originally at, what was it? Four, seven, down by two, five, six, seven, 11, minus five is six to three. He still takes three damage. And then Beat Cop kills himself for the greater good and this guy dies and we're forced to scan and it does nothing and that doesn't really matter. And we walk down and we could have ordered this differently with the Beat Cop to get the scan for free, but we'll just spend the four clues like an adult and scan the hard way. 
completing the scenario. And it's because this is on Sister Mary that after I killed the guy, I was like, wait a second, I'm just doing this in the wrong order. I need to play Mateo's turn first. Anyway, despite the struggle bus that we were on, despite coming right down to the wire and only getting that last victory because of second Spectral Razor, that is R1, full memories, full completion. This guy's victory zero, he's not real, don't look at him. Unfortunately, we will be adding a tablet to the bag forever because, um, yeah, we did beef that part a little bit. So there's one tablet. We entered the virtual dreamlands by our own means. No one's infected by the cyber virus. We got them killed. We got our tablet. Victory X, proceed to scenario two. And I think Victory X is quite a lot. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These decks are going to be off to the races. That is getting a full clear on this is very, very good. So even though that was down to the wire, even though it relied on Spectral Razor not auto failing a couple of times, like we had succeeding, we had getting to this location and using the scan guaranteed. That was a better performance than I expected out of these guys. They definitely are on the struggle bus a little bit, but not very much. Ancient Covenant favor the sun is just really nice. Like being a forehead mystic most of the time sucks. But then you just get to say you pass six of your test and that's kind of a huge deal. Anyways, I'll be back with you next time with much more experienced decks. I've been another coherent. Hope you enjoy this first episode of the Tattered Emollient. And next episode I play, I'm going to be playing on the new Tabletop Sim. And this is the new version of Tabletop Sim. Most notably, these tickers probably work now. And these are just much cleaner. I'm guessing... How do I remove? Is it right-clicking? Oh, it's just left-click, right-click now. How do I take return? Oh, you have to select which one you're doing now? That's a little bit awkward. You're almost always using add remove though, right? Okay, uh, I understand it now. Take return, you have to select, you're usually doing add remove. I'm gonna like this a lot more, I think, once I get used to it, it's just all putting initially. But yeah, new version of the Tabletop Sim, moving on to Electric Nightmare next time. I've been Rather Goherent, hope you enjoyed the start of Dark Matter with me, and I'll see you in the next one. If you did like the video, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff really does help the channel grow.